Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Thank you very much for taking time out of your very busy schedules to join us today. I'm going to be introducing a little bit of the format and some of the team members that are going to be presenting today. Uh, Tyson Chopte, John Martinuk, and Peter Savoda. Some of you may know some or all of uh, that team. For anybody who doesn't know me, I'm Nora Ray. I'm Senior Account Manager and uh, uh, really uh, manage our secu security portfolio from a sales perspective. So a couple of things at the, uh, uh, at the top um, from Teams Tips perspective. Under uh, live reactions, please feel free to raise your hand if you have a question. We would love this to be very, very interactive. There is a chat window as well. Feel free to put your questions in there and whoever is the best one to respond after reviewed will we'll certainly address that. Um, as I indicated, I'm, I introduced myself a little bit. I've been around for uh, a long time and with Broadview Networks for the last 14 and a half years. And again, my focus is our security portfolio. John Martinuk, um, a great asset to our, our team, leads the security team at Broadview Networks, performs security assessments, serves uh, as our VISO, which is a fractional security officer, and is ha carries many certifications under the banner of security. And Tyson Choptain, our executive vice president, co-founder of Broadview Networks, and um, I think many of you on this call today probably know who he is. Peter Swoboda is also joining us. I think, uh, oh, one thing I didn't mention, sorry about that, Tyson. Um, today is a lunch and learn. Skip cards were delivered. If you didn't happen to get your skip card, which on occasion has happened, feel free to uh, send a note to solutions at Broadview Networks and we'll make sure to get that remedied for you. Over to you, Tyson. Thank you, Nora, and good afternoon, everyone. Really appreciate people taking the time to join us today. Uh, in advance of Peter reviewing the details of some of the security services that we offer, uh, John and I just wanna take a moment to sort of give an overview of our cybersecurity portfolio and really highlight on the areas that we see as the most critical, whether the driving factors for these cybersecurity uh, services, outcomes, or changes to your environment are because of audit requirements, if they're because of you know, vendor or customer requirements, uh, whether they're just an organization's internal desire to improve their cybersecurity portfolio, or whether it's due to cybersecurity insurance, which we often see as a driving factor for a lot of organizations now to improve their cybersecurity portfolio. The items highlighted in yellow are really the ones that we see as the most critical. And when we talk about monitored and managed security services, we look at endpoint detection and response. So, you know, next generation antivirus, uh, XDR, EDR, MDR, all the different terms out there that you'll, you'll hear for the technology, but you want a modern anomaly-based uh, virus and threat detection solution that has, you know, a security operation center reviewing the details 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, the next step up from that, or really the step you should have before that, depending on where you're at in your in your cybersecurity journey, is is security information and event management services, and and that's really the ability for security professionals to be able to understand real time what's going on in your network and understand the risk your network is currently dealing with. And, and having that security team behind those services is really where the strength is in those services. Uh, patch management is critical. If you aren't patching your systems, you're at risk to the vulnerabilities that are out there. Just like every wall that's built, every application that's built has cracks and holes and vulnerabilities are really those cracks and holes exposed. And we wanna make sure we fill those cracks and holes as quickly as possible once they're discovered. And that's really the job of patch management. Managed backup and disaster recovery. We can do a lot to help prevent cybersecurity uh, incidents in a customer environment. 
but we can't guarantee they're not going to happen. And a part of the cybersecurity strategy of an organization needs to be not just what you're doing to prevent cybersecurity incidents, but what you're going to do to recover from and make that as low cost and quick as possible when you have a cybersecurity uh, incident. Multi-factor authentication is a critical service that you should have in place for every single uh, application and connection that has the ability to do multi-factor authentication. And if you have applications today that don't give you that option, you may want to consider changes to ones that do. And if you have services in place that have the ability to use multi-factor authentication and you're not using it, VPN, remote access, cloud-based services, we highly recommend you implement MFA or two-factor authentication as quickly as possible. Another really important item is cybersecurity awareness training, making sure you have a base level of knowledge and understanding amongst your staff of what their responsibility is in your cybersecurity strategy. It's not just on IT. It's not just on the business owners and business management. It is on everyone's back and shoulders, the responsibility of cybersecurity. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Tyson mentioned that journey. So one of the common questions is, you know, how do you start? You know, where where do I begin? And it really comes down to selecting a framework, you know, be it CIS, NIST, PCI, depending on your business and industry needs, but really start with a framework, assess yourself against that framework to create that gap analysis. analysis. You know, what are our security weaknesses? And for those weaknesses, how do we get there and how do we prioritize them? And that's where the road roadmap comes in. You know, kind of like those vulnerabilities that big PDF or book of vulnerabilities sits on a shelf. That security assessment needs a project and needs a roadmap to drive those improvements and posture changes forward. Um, Tyson also mentioned incident response. Um, for a lot of us, right, it's not going to be if, it's going to be when. So are you ready? You know, what proactive measures are you taking? What proactive controls do you have? And then on the people process side, do you have an incident response plan? And does that plan cover multiple scenarios? Uh, at a minimum, you know, you should think about, you know, probably five to eight plans, but typically those plans include a ransom, a mass incident or, you know, larger outage, data breach for sure, among a few others. And related to patching is those regular vulnerability assessment. Regular basis, scan your internal network, all your internal networks for known vulnerabilities and weaknesses, and then manage those vulnerabilities. CIS, for example, you want to set up a rating system. And if you find a vulnerability with you know X ratings or critical rating, take care of that within days or weeks, according to your policy. Obviously, the sooner the better for a lot of the findings. And that also uh, relates to pen testing. Uh, in a perfect world, you do your vulnerability assessment, find those vulnerabilities, patch them, and then run that pen test uh, second. Um, in regards to MFA, just a couple of additional comments. Uh, Tyson mentioned insurers on, on recent cyber insurer renewals. Uh, really, the, the checkbox is MFA everywhere. Uh, so prepare for MFA on places that you may not have thought of, like server logins, uh, admin logins to networking equipment, et cetera. So I, I wasn't right. sure if I'm Nora, on. you wanted to introduce me before yeah, I jump in. Yeah, sorry, or? I was on, <laughs> on mute talking away here. Um, so uh, approximately four years ago, uh, Broadview Networks uh, really developed us, uh, began a partnership with LCM Security. They're located in Oakville, Ontario, and we have been delivering for the last four years to the enterprise space in Manitoba. Some very large customers um, have partnered with us to consume the managed security services offered as well as uh, one-off engagements or, or projects depending on the requirements. And uh, Peter Swoboda is the director of um, the SOC and um, the partnership is has just been hugely successful. So Peter oversees the design of the managed security services uh, that LCM delivers to our clients. Uh, he's been there for uh, a long time 
he understands the industry well, has the certifications, uh, just like John does, and and we're really focused, or the organization is very focused on automating processes wherever they can within the security architecture, making it easy and manageable um, to improve your posture and to understand what's going on in the environment. So he's going to take the the bulk of the presentation from this point forward. Thanks a lot, Peter. Thanks, Nora. Um, yeah, so um, basically this, you know, you're, you're, a successful security practice really needs to uh, be built on a life cycle approach, right? So we've been using this kind of approach uh, at LCM Security since our inception, basically. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's used to guide organizations of all sizes um, to define their processes, the, the people and the technology. So uh, from the perspective of, of this entire webinar, really, you know, in order to secure your organization, uh, it really all starts with a cybersecurity plan that also follows this type of life cycle. Um, so when when you start kind of thinking about developing a cybersecurity plan, um, you know, it's kind of opposite to what a lot of organizations still do is, you know, if you're sitting on that latest and greatest uh, last webinar that, that you saw the other day, you know, you see a tool that seems like, ah, you know, it's a gap within your organization. You think it's useful. You're going to buy it. You implement it. Great. Um, you know, probably not the worst thing to do. However, you know, there may be much bigger holes uh, that you need to be securing in your organization. So developing that that holistic view of uh, and, and ensuring you understand all the gaps um, uh, then it allows you to be in that position to really evaluate where the the biggest threats are, the biggest risks to the organization, and then um, you know you can implement technologies to to fill in those gaps. Um, and and then you basically build out this whole roadmap over time of what technologies will you need to implement today, what technologies are you looking at next year or in two years or three years even, right? And uh, and the other challenge with all of this is getting um, not just the IT team to be involved in all of this, right? So we still see it all the time. I mean, security becomes a responsibility of IT and that's it. And it it cannot be like that, right? You have to have um, the senior management involved in your security planning, in you know understanding what the budgets are, where the gaps are, where the weaknesses are, where the, where the risk is to the organization. So we basically help uh, or our solution in, in developing this whole cybersecurity plan is kind of this three-step approach that you see on the screen here, right? So, um, you know, it starts with doing an assessment against a security framework. Um, so there's a number of different frameworks we can do assessments on. Uh, if you're not sure if you need to be aligning to NIST or ISO or um, whatever the case is, we will typically recommend to align against the, the Center for Internet Security, the CIS CSC framework but we can do assessments against various types of um, frameworks as I mentioned. I'll talk more about what this assessment entails over the next few slides actually, but that's kind of your step one. After you do the assessment, once you um, kind of build out that roadmap, because that's one of the deliverables out of the assessment actually is, um, you know, we'll not only present you with where the gaps are, uh, but we'll also prioritize your remediation strategy over the next you know multiple years you know what you need to worry about this year what you want to worry about next year and so on so you then move into phase two which is the remediation right you're going to start needing to actually you know fix some of the gaps that have been uncovered and then ultimately it, it leads us to step three which is the ongoing management of security which is also where uh, you may choose to leverage uh, a number of our managed service offerings as well um, and the uh, later half of the presentation today, we'll kind of focus a little bit about some of the managed services as well. Um, so with regards to the assessment at phase one, um, you know, as we go through a kind of a series of interviews and really starting to get to know um, your environment, we're going to be scoring everything on this maturity rating scale, right? So every control that gets evaluated, it's not just going to be a yes, you're doing this or no, you're not doing that type answer. Um, everything is going to be uh, scored on this maturity rating scale between zero and five. And just to give you an, an idea of what that actually means, you know, if, if the control is asking you if you have a firewall, 
easy answer is a yes or no, but really it's so much more than that, right? It's, you know, if you have the firewall, uh, is it actually locked down or are all your network segments actually protected and or do you just have catch-alls that, that still allow traffic through the firewall? Do you have written policies on how the man the firewall needs to be managed, accessed? Um, you know, is it locked down? Is there any integration capabilities? Do you have regular reviews of how it can be uh, optimized? All that stuff ties into what the scoring uh, needs to be. So at the end of everything, you'll have not only just an understanding of the gaps, but also how mature your security um, uh, program is at the end of the day. So on that note, I'm going to kind of break out of the presentation for a moment. And I'm going to show you what the assessment looks like. Um, there's basically going to be three deliverables that you can expect as part of the assessment. The first one is going to be a report of findings. Um, the second one is going to be an Excel spreadsheet. And the third one is kind of that how can we help document, right? So I'm not going to spend too much time on this uh, in the interest of time. Um, if there's you know any interest on this, feel free to reach out to the Broadview team or Nora or whoever your point of contact is. Um, you know, we'll be happy to go into a more in-depth presentation on any of this stuff. So this is deliverable number one that you can expect from a security assessment. It's the report of findings, and it's meant to really be that executive style overview, right? So it's not going to go too much too technical into the details. It's going to give you a high level summary of what this is about, um, why it's so important to adapt or um, align yourself rather to an industry recognized framework for the reasons mentioned earlier, right? So you want that holistic view of everything. So that at the end of the day, it's not, you know, what I think is a good idea for you guys to be doing in your organization or what, what Broadview thinks is a good idea. This is all aligned against industry best practices and people a lot smarter than, than any of us here probably have joined their heads together in, in creating these frameworks. Um, so it's quite important to mention that. We talked a little bit about the scoring. Um, there's going to be a summary of findings. So really just a paragraph form. We're going to try and keep it fairly high level, not too technical in this document, but really, you know, what are the findings? What are the areas that, that need improvement in little paragraph forms? Um, and then it gets us to your, your average score rating as well, right? Um, so how do you rate as an average score across all the controls? How does that compare to other organizations? Are you kind of in line with what other organizations are seeing? Are you kind of behind them or are you ahead of the game? I mean, what we're seeing really in reality is that everyone still has um, uh, room for improvement, right? I mean, even our average scores are somewhere around a 1.2 out of five. It's fairly low still, right? So, um, which is why there's so many breaches still happening, right? Um, there's also going to be a section that kind of breaks down the score for you as well into these categories of security. So, where are some of the, you know, strengths? Where are the the bigger weaknesses in the environment? Um, and then we also kind of break down the results into um, a technology perspective. So you'll have a, a list of all the gaps um, uh, grouped into, as I mentioned earlier, those those little paragraphs. Um, and then you'll also have a view like this that you see on my screen. So there's going to be a number of technological controls or tools, I guess, at the end of the day that you're going to need to implement to be able to satisfy all the controls within the framework. Um, so we show you that view as well, like what tools will you actually need to satisfy all these controls? Uh, and this is kind of a, you know, a listing of, of all those tools that basically make up the whole CIS framework. So even though it seems like a lot, this is probably covered by three or four vendors um, if you're using the right types of products. So um, it's not actually that hard to have all these tools at your disposal. Um, but we do provide that view for you as well and kind of a breakdown of what that looks like. And then really the end of the report of findings just talks about high level recommendations, which is really following these next two documents that you'll also have as part of the deliverable on what you need to do next. Um, so deliver number two, delivery deliverable <laughs> number two is this Excel spreadsheet. There's a lot of tabs at the bottom. This will probably make a lot more sense if this information is actually relevant to your organization once you actually go through it. But I will kind of touch on some of the most important aspects of this. Um, uh, this view here is basically a list of all the controls, right? So we're going to be going through every single control with you. Uh, it happens over about nine hours of interviews with your team. 
right? So we get a good understanding of what you guys are doing. We provide you with examples of what you should be doing and really trying to understand where you are on the maturity rating scale and assigning scores and collecting information about the tools you have and what you're actually doing. We then map every single one of the controls to projects so that at the end of the day, when we play back the information to you in terms of, uh, you know, how do you remediate this stuff? We're not just going to give you a list of 200 items you, that you need to fix. It's going to be more in this structure here, which is one of the other tabs. You're going to have a list of prioritized projects um, that address all of the, the controls that we're lacking. Right, and we actually group these projects um, in a priority rating scheme here. So basically you have phase one priorities, which are your most important priorities that you need to make sure you're doing uh, or projects that you're doing in, in priority one. Phase two becomes your priority two, three, four, and then we kind of split this out into anywhere from you know, four to ten priorities, depending on how many gaps there were. Um, we also provide you with this dashboard view, um, which allows you to keep track of your remediation progress as well, right? So. Um, let's say you set yourself, you know, today you're at 0 0.23. Uh, let's say in two years time, your goal is going to be to get to a three out of five, which is not an unreasonable goal whatsoever. Um, I would say probably the bare minimum you want to be at is a two. That's kind of what we say is a, is a passing grade, I guess, where you, you're actually satisfying at a bare minimum all the controls is a two out of five. Um, you can kind of map that out in this blue line of where you want to get to, and then you can keep track of your score over time. This is all dynamically linked, this, this spreadsheet. So as you update scores in here, as you you know filter through on the different projects, once you've undertaken them, uh, let's say you've done multi-factor authentication, that'll address all these controls. You can mark these as higher scores. That gets reflected in your dashboard, um, and you can provide this as a view to senior management again, you know where you are in your whole plan and, and your goal that you're trying to achieve. Uh, one other thing around prioritization is, once again, it's not that I think it's a good idea to prioritize projects in this way or broad view. It is all based on actual sound logic, uh, which is actually um, using these call these things called implementation groups. This is a mechanism developed by the Center of Internet Security, once again, on how you should prioritize things. So there's kind of three groups of priorities, and that makes its way into how we present the, the priorities of projects back to you. There's also a number of other tabs in here, which I won't go into too much detail about, but they basically present all these gaps and how they map to the project so you have a better understanding of what exactly each project is going to be doing for you, which controls is it going to be addressing and so on. So you get this Excel worksheet document that is uh, dynamically linked, and you can keep this document updated, and you can do all sorts of searches. And it, this document is really meant for the person that's responsible for remediation and keeping track of uh, remediation progress. The third document we give you as part of your security assessment is the how can we help document. Right, It's the, the roadmap at the end of the day where everything else, uh, I'm going to skip through the first few pages here. Really, the, the most important thing in here is that you're going to have a listing of all those projects um, that we had in the Excel document, right? All of these projects that we see in here, they once again get listed in uh, in the third document. But now uh, we're going to be actually providing you with our solutions. So um, you know, between Broadview and LCM, we um, combined we can offer solutions for anything that the framework uh, requires of you. So if you need assistance with anything, we can provide you the solutions for that. Uh, and we actually give you budgetary numbers here as well. So now you not only have your roadmap, your prioritized list of projects, uh, your goal that you want to reach, uh, you now also have uh, an idea of how much this is going to cost. So the other two documents, they're all vendor agnostic. We're not pushing any specific technologies. We're just aligning you against the framework. This third document now starts positioning certain technologies that, that we can help you um, implement to remediate the gaps, right? So how can we help at the end of the day? So we have all those same projects along with budgetary numbers. And um, really that, you know, the, the combination of those three documents is our solution for developing this uh, security roadmap for you. So once you go through an exercise like that, you're going to be at the end of your step one. You're going to have, you're going to, by now you're going to go through the assessment already, you have that good understanding of 
what you need to do, how is it prioritized, what is it going to cost. You can now have these discussions with your senior management to, you know, get the budgets allocated over the next X amount of years. And once again, this is a journey, right? So you're not going to be able to get from zero to, you know, that two or three out of five in a year. That's not realistic. Your roadmap is probably going to be two to three years. Um, so then you're going to move into remediation. You're now going to have to start remediating these things. And ultimately, that'll lead you into um, uh, the managed services side of things. Um, so um, really, the next you know, second half of this presentation, if you will, I guess, will kind of focus on that managed services uh, aspect of um, um, the services we can provide. So there's going to be about 30 slides or so. I'm going to go through them quite quickly. Um, it basically summarizes our managed service for security log monitoring. So uh, in other words, the managed SIM solution as IEM, right? So security incident and event management solution um, where we can actually um, keep or maintain eyes on your environment by a by our security operations center, which is staffed 24 by 7 around the clock, constantly monitoring logs from your entire environment to let you know if there's any anomalous behavior happening, um, if there's certain devices that are a greater risk than others, but really, you know, giving you an idea of what's actually happening on your network and all and on on all of your systems. Um, so the way I'm going to kind of present this service is by reviewing um, the quarterly security review report. So this would be a report that you would have uh, and we would review with you once a quarter. So every three months, there's basically an 80 page document or so that we deliver to you and we review with you on everything that has happened over the last quarter. Um, so it's it's a report that gets reviewed every quarter. However, these things that are included in the report are also exactly the things that our analysts are looking at uh, on a 24 by 7 um, basis uh, within your environment, right? So the, these are literally the things that the analysts are going to be reviewing every day and raising tickets to you if there's any concerning items. So at the end of the day, that like there shouldn't really be anything new that you um, that we're reviewing with you in these quarterly reports. But it does highlight the whole service, right? So we're going to be, you know, there's going to be things like ticket reviews, there's vulnerability scan reviews, um, you know, what is the web filtering logs, what are the anomaly detection, asset management, file integrity monitoring, all these things get reviewed. So these QSR meetings, they kind of start with a SWOT analysis, which is also phenomenal for, once again, senior management. At least the first two slides in these presentations, you know. Um, from that third party visibility perspective, from from our point of view, what does your organization looks like look like? Like what are the strengths? What are the weaknesses that we're observing? Where are some opportunities for you to improve security? And what are the threats that your organization is facing? Um, so this is custom tailored to every organization that we're monitoring. Um, we also give you kind of this mission control slide at the very beginning, just to give you an idea of what it is that our analysts have a view into, because um, there are certain technologies that you will require to actually have in your environment before they can generate logs that can then be analyzed by our team, right? So there's going to be certain things that the, the service kind of provides for you, but there's going to be other expectations where you may need to purchase other tools, um, such as a web application firewall, for example, um, to make sure that our analysts have that full visibility into your environment. So we kind of review that. We give you kind of, you know, um, color coded visibility and what it is that, that we have eyes on right now. We then go into some key observation summaries. Um, what are kind of the major events that happened over the quarter? Um, we also have a monthly touch point call over and beyond the quarterly call where we're going to be reviewing tickets with you. But on a quarterly basis, we give you ticketing summaries. Um, all of our tickets are based on um, ITIL processes. Uh, we review things like open, closed, on hold tickets, how many change tickets were there, how many incidents, were there any problem tickets, and so on, all aligned against ITIL. Um, so we have a little summary on that. 
Um, vulnerability scans, I mentioned earlier, right? So um, we can show you which hosts have the greatest amount of vulnerabilities on your network. Like what is the greatest risk? Where should you be focusing? Maybe you're patching, maybe even you, even though you have a patch management program, maybe, you know, some devices were forgotten about. Maybe they're, they're getting missed by the patch management solution or something. And, you know, that those types of um, risk, key hosts get brought to your attention in these types of reports. So at, in other words, where are the, the greatest amount of vulnerabilities in your environment? Where should you be focusing your patching efforts? Uh, we also take a look at the web filtering um, that's happening in the environment. And from a web filter, filtering perspective, we don't really care about who's going to Facebook, right? We're going to be focusing on the security related categories who's going to proxy avoidance websites, who's clicking on phishing links, who's accessing websites that are known to host malicious content. So we'll kind of highlight from that perspective, where do you have risks within your organization? Um, you know, presented a number of different graphs, so different uh, views and everything, but at the end of the day, really focusing on the, the, the malicious type categories here and top hosts, top destinations. There's also, um, you know, user um, administrative changes that are happening in the environment. So this is where we bring in things like uh, M365 logs and Active Directory logs. Um, uh, you know, who's making changes in the environment? What are those types of changes being done? Um, who are they affecting? You know, which users are, are doing that? And then, you know, are they even admins? Do you see usernames in here that uh, shouldn't be making changes? So you kind of get that view from the um, Active Directory or M365 type reports. Um, what are the different changes being done? Authentication failures is looking more on brute force attempts or misconfigurations. Uh, maybe someone's knocking at the door, trying all sorts of different passwords, brute force attempts. You know, who's being targeted? Which systems? Can you do anything about it? All these discussions get brought up in conversation as uh, as a result of this. Um, and then kind of towards the end, we also have a quick uh, review on the dark web monitoring stuff. So have any accounts been compromised on your environment? Um, you know, should people you know, make sure that they're changing passwords? We, we have views on what passwords are available on the dark web. So which is quite terrifying actually when you send a, a, a note to a user saying, hey, by the way, if you're using this password anywhere, anywhere else, uh, chances are someone else is also using that password and uh, you may want to change that. So, you know, that type of service is also included in the monitoring. So I mentioned a number of these, you know, I was kind of cherry picking a few. You know, this presentation in all honesty is, is about a two hour presentation once a quarter. Um, so there's a lot more to say. Um, but once again, in the interest of time, it was kind of a cherry picking some of the, the you know, just to get you a, a feel for the whole service. And at the end of the day, once again, you know, these are all things that our analysts are looking at a 24 by 7 basis all the time. They're opening up tickets with you if there are any events of concern that we can address as soon as they happen. From a process perspective, um, this is kind of the, the way the, the SOC is structured. Um, so there's going to be events of all sorts of types feeding into our sim. This can be, you know, databases, servers, firewalls, anything at the end of the day that generates a log um, will be populated into the sim that we manage. Um, we have uh, three tiers of analysts um, looking at alerts, looking at incidents, looking at things that, that you know that, that are happening in the environment. Um, they're going to be opening up tickets, launching investigations. We also have a dedicated hunt team that is looking for anything over and beyond any automated alerts that may trigger from the system. Um, uh, that will also be raising tickets. Uh, and then we also have intelligent feeds um, that get fed in and, and all the data that, that we're collecting from your environment get get analyzed again so that we can see if there's any, um, you know, any IPs that are talking with known bad IPs or, or known botnets and that kind of stuff. So uh, we can shut that down before it has any uh, chance to do any harm. So the team itself, which at the end of the day, this becomes an extension of your team. Um, this is what the, the team is comprised of. Basically, we have the CISO um, level experience individuals. 
uh, SOC director, um, you know, senior consultants to to drive any kind of bigger projects along with the project managers. Um, there's three tiers of analysts, as I mentioned. The tier three analysts are kind of important as well because these guys are the ones that get brought in when there is an actual incident. If there's a breach or something, we kind of give you that assistance as well. Not only you know giving you the information you need, uh, but also kind of uh, you know guiding you along the way. You know what should you be doing right now um, to help you kind of get back on your feet, lock down where the problem is, um, reduce um, that mean time to resolution at the end of the day. And then finally, the report writers, which not to be discounted by any means, these are the, the people that will be um, basically summarizing very technical issues in non-technical terms and then trying to give you the information so that you know what's actually happening. Um, this is a sample of our incident response process. You know, how do tickets get open? How do they get escalated internally? Um, uh, this is also a critical piece of our onboarding process. Because when we're onboarding, um, we need to make sure that we integrate into your incident response process. So when there is an incident, we're a large part of that because we have the logs. We, we're going to be kind of guiding you along the way, what you need to be doing. But at the end of the day, you know, that is only a part of your bigger incident response plan that you need to have. So we start talking about how do we integrate our response plan into your response plans as well. Uh, some case studies, you know, basically happy customers. Um, we have a multi-billion dollar pharmaceutical company um, that's kind of started off with an initial assessment with us, um, then moved into all sorts of remediation and ultimately ended up in our managed service offering. So kind of going through the, all the, the cycles. Very similar story with the number of universities that we have. They go through an assessment, um, uh, implement uh, some technologies, help us set them up or we help them set them up and ultimately ends up in a managed service type offering to, to help them manage everything. Publishers uh, and retailers we also have. Um, we've actually set up also um, a whole SOC operations for Orion. Um, so I don't know if, uh, if anyone's familiar. It's, it's an organization in Ontario focusing on universities actually. So basically they deliver internet connections for universities and they're actually offering a SOC service to other universities as well. And we actually developed all the processes um, on how the SOC needs to run, what things do they need to be managing, um, basically set up the whole SOC for them and hand it over for them to manage. Um, the last slide I really wanted to talk to you guys about today is the onboarding process. Um, so this is really where, if not done right, a lot of the other managed services typically fall flat. So. Uh, you know, if you're Googling around and stuff, the, the, there's many places that will tell you managed services are, you know, not the best approach because, you know, this happened or that happened. And the reality is um, if the onboarding is not done right, then you're setting yourself up for failure. And we, we've we developed this onboarding process um, over uh, many, many years. Um, it's constantly improving. And we really pride ourselves on making sure that there is a solid understanding. Um, both from your side in terms of what it is that we're monitoring, what it is that we're responsible for, as well as from our side, the SOC side on you know what's in your environment and, and making sure that we have all the information to make sure this is all successful. So there's basically a whole project plan that we um, set up and we have weekly check in calls usually takes six to eight weeks to fully onboard a new customer. Um, we're going to be meeting for at least an hour a week. Uh, there's going to be documents we fill in, such as escalation procedures. Who do we call in the middle of the night if, if no one's getting back to us and there's a critical severity ticket? What are the SLAs? What are the severity numbers uh, or severity ratings? Um, you know, making sure that we understand which devices we need to be collecting logs from so that there's no ambiguity at the end of the day where customer says, well, I thought you guys were monitoring that device and initially was never in scope. We never configured something maybe for, for log monitoring. So none of that really happens because we're up front. There's documents that, that show specifically what it is we're monitoring and there's specific checks that we do also to make sure the right types of logs are being sent as well. Um, you know, you can actually configure logging quite easily with a check of a button or a setting, but then the question is, you know, what is that device actually sending? And um, you know, a good example is with Windows devices. 
you know, if, if you just collect event logs, that's great. But there's a number of really critical events that never make it into the event log unless you configure specific auditing policies in your GPOs. So it's things like that that we make sure are configured and that we have all the right information to deliver the, the successful service. Um, and on that front, I'll, I'll pass it back over to Broadview to a uh, quick summary here, and then we'll move into questions after that. Thanks, Peter. That was uh, fantastic, as always. So to summarize, um, <clears throat> what we talked about at the beginning is really, and what Peter's reinforced throughout today, is really align yourself to a security framework. That really is step one. You need to pick a framework. You need to measure yourself against that framework. You need to understand where you are in your cybersecurity posture today. And from that, you can build that remediation roadmap. <clears throat> if you don't have multi-factor authentication, endpoint detection response, SIM services, patch management, you know, manage backup and DR, you know, incident response, vulnerability assessment and management. If you don't have those things in place today, they're definitely going to be high on the priority list on any cybersecurity framework remediation roadmap. If you do have them in place, even if you have them in place, the uh, assessment is going to understand, do you have them in place properly? Are you following all the right processes, procedures, and policies? As John mentioned early on, it's people, process, and technology. We have to align those together. And understanding that you have a service in place does not necessarily mean you have the service in place properly for a full cybersecurity posture to be completed. So <clears throat> these are the most important items to cover. There's no question about that. As I mentioned at the beginning, cyber insurance is often going to be targeting on these 10 items as the primary that every organization should have in place. Or if and if you don't have it in place, in depending on the industry you're in and the type of business you do, you may not even be able to get cybersecurity insurance. When you apply for cybersecurity insurance, how well and how deep you have some of these technologies and services implemented may impact the cost of your cybersecurity insurance positively or negatively. So it's an important consideration to have at least these 10 items in place. And uh, <clears throat> that alignment and assessment to that security framework is really the starting point. So we have time for questions. Uh, you can certainly ask questions in chat by typing. If you want to ask a question live, please raise your hand and we can turn your microphone and your camera on. And you can certainly ask a question live. Uh, either way is open and available. So please feel free to ask any questions you'd like. And while we wait for a couple of questions to come in, I do want to add the um, the list of clients that Peter demonstrated on his, his slide. There, there's some very large clients, but we are in the Manitoba marketplace, and we have a lot of referenceable clients, whether it's um, project work, engagement work, assessment work, or managed um, security services. If there is somebody that you want to talk to that is consuming our services and would like to get um, their perspective on it, please just reach out to me and I can I can facilitate an introduction for you. Uh, we have a question here. During an audit of existing policies and controls, are you relying on the feedback from the customer for what has been configured or are you performing a manual or scripted assessment of firewall policies and configurations to validate the findings and any misconfigurations? I could probably take that one. Um, <clears throat> so uh, what we're proposing here is um, is basically an assessment based on interviews. It's not a full audit. We can do a complete audit. It typically has a you know higher price tag. Usually when organizations aren't really sure what they need to be doing, you start off small. Um, you know when you jump into a full audit, when you're verifying evidence, things like that, um, those projects tend to be very large, uh, overwhelming, and, and also a lot more expensive. So our uh, approach, which has been very successful, is to start off small. We'll do a series of, of interview sessions. There's about nine hours of interviews. 
um, where we basically ask questions. We give you examples of what other organizations are doing, really what it is that you need to be doing to satisfy every single control. And then we just, based on conversations, um, we get a good understanding of what it is that you're doing and if that is sufficient to satisfy the control or not. Um, and our gap report, our initial gap report is based on that. But if you do have a requirement to do a full audit where we want us to verify evidence, you want us to check firewall configurations, server configurations, that is also an option. I'll add for CIS specifically, we do have access to a uh, their professional assessment tool, which does some of those automated scans on things like Windows servers, clients, you bet. Any other questions? Anything anyone wants to discuss? Feel free to take advantage of access to Peter and John's uh, incredible depth of knowledge and experience. If there aren't any other questions, I think that might be a, a wrap. Yeah, seems that way. So I, uh, on behalf of Broadview Networks, thank you to everyone who took the time to attend today. Uh, if you have any questions, reach out to us. I, I hope you gathered some information and this was valuable for you. And I, I hope you enjoy the balance of your day. Thank you so much.